Is it finally time for the summing mixer? This week's catch up includes lots of new information about our summing mixer, audio tech news, an updated look into some new redesign plans for Mix Analog's website. We're probably gonna be having a segment at some point where you can send in your own songs and we choose the one that we like the most. Then we showcase it in the weekly video and give it some ratings and, well, look at it from a technical point of view. To start off with the summing mixer. In terms of all physical components, it's done. I've been sitting with Boyan and we've been designing the graphical user interface using our new design language for Mix Analog 3.0. Right now, I'm just moving around a couple of sliders and honestly, I think we've got a really cool new color scheme. There is something else that I'm not quite allowed to tell you yet, but we may be partnering up with an absolutely incredible brand to help run Mix Analog 3.0 on the most rock solid, high fidelity hardware you've ever seen. Believe me when I tell you, we're not playing around. We're going full on mastering grade precision. Speaking of Mix Analog 3.0, the rollout is going to look like this. Because we have so many different units and the backend solution of 3.0 is going to be so different from 2.0, the best way to go about this is to introduce 3.0 incrementally with multiple really impressive updates, progressively scaling across the platform as we go. The first stage of the rollout is launching the summing mixer and 1084 on the Mix Analog 3.0 solution. We're putting in the effort to figure out exactly how we are going to make everything seamless between elements of 2.0 and 3.0. But effectively, this, this is going to be our first public offering. As we go, more and more features, updates, and segments of 3.0 are going to be implemented. Then another huge thing that's happening with 3.0 is a completely redesigned and refined website, method of booking, uploading files, and choosing gear. This also involves being able to create your own custom gear chains that actually get pretty heavily discounted the more gear and features that you add to the chain. We've also changed the design language, logo, color scheme, and we're kind of moving into a very aesthetic, vibrant new look. Every huge development that we achieve on this, I'm going to be sharing in the weekly videos. So make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell icon, and turn notifications on so that you don't miss anything. So first segment out of the way, let's talk about the weekly audio tech news. Mixland's Tilt has just been released. They're pretty famous for releasing the rubber band compressor, which had a very unique way of compressing things. And it realistically made it feel like you're pushing your mix into a physical rubber band. Quite simply put, it's a Tilt EQ with a vacuum tube output transformer. I think super revolutionary, but it could actually be quite useful when you're looking for a quick and dirty way to balance out some frequencies and add a little bit of saturation. For $29, it's not gonna break the bank. API has just launched their new monitor controller in the form of MC531, which offers a standalone version of the monitoring functionality built into the center section of API's legendary analog consoles. Specifically designed to include fully featured monitor control for DAW workflows, the MC531 can integrate seamlessly into any audio production environment where functionality, ease of use, and an accurate reference of each audio source is required. It's priced at around $2,495 and it's now shipping. Slate Digital has just released their new SSL Dynamics plugin, which comes free if you're on the All Access Pass monthly subscription. Considering I have the real thing, I'd probably still use analog, but if you don't have that, this is not a bad emulation at all. It seems to be worth checking out. 1010 Music kicks off its pocket-sized nanobox series with the Lemon Drop and Fireball. The Lemon Drop and Fireball are granular and wavetable synths, respectively, tucked into colorful enclosures and deeply customizable instruments that each specialize in one form of the synthesis. Both instruments share some design sensibilities, a relatively large touchscreen, two knobs, four buttons to control the action, as well as a colorful enclosure and RO to integrate into your setup. Both instruments are priced at 449 euros each and a release date is yet to be announced. That pretty much wraps up the video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on more information next week. That's all for now. Bye.